Hello guys, today's session is related with SSRF and this is DP uh, class base that is uh, data provider class base so this is more complex one than my previous query based report so I will just start by creating the project for uh, uh, this report so basically I am targeting here for a demo purpose the inventory transactions so I want to show you uh, uh, how to create a report which is based on uh, classes and a business logic or a, a little bit complex business logic then you need to do like this uh, DP uh, based uh, data provider classes based uh, report actually it involves multiple classes and for each uh, each class has a purpose for example I will be using here a contract class which is used for pa parameter passing and then uh, there there is uh, in this i will not use a controller or ui builder uh, classes but those are also very important classes so for example a controller uh, class is also used normally when you have multiple design and based upon the parameters of contract class you want to show a specific uh, for example design of the report so the controller works mainly for that but there can be other purposes as well then there is a ui builder class when you have a specific uh, for example you want to show a customer uh, for example sorry uh, not customer uh, actually the lookup on a dialogue then you can use a ui builder that is a user interface builder class and normally the main class is dp class data provider uh, class so we will start by uh, uh, creating a temporary table here as a container we must have a temporary table where we need to process the data and store the data uh, temporarily there are two choices uh, normally a temp db based or a in memory based table which are uh, uh, normally the decision is based upon your requirement for example in memory is uh, normally the data is kept inside the ram and it is not preferred way because normally you cannot judge that for example a limit of for example 1000 rows you can sometime you can exceed it but if you are sure that you will not exceed those uh, limits then you can use in memory table as well that is more efficient but uh, the temp db based is of course is temp db based uh, uh, table that is also a temporary uh, table and it will not retain your it, it will not persist your records so normally a regular table will persist the record but in this uh, dp uh, ssrs report we will make use of uh, normally time db based uh, table so i will uh, label it as inventory transaction it is it is good practice to make uh, use of label codes instead of just putting the text in, inside but maybe sometime for the demo or training purpose i am putting it for the sake of you know uh, quick uh, uh, video recording but normally it is all, all always a best practice to create your own labels or you can uh, use the existing label if you are sure those are not going to change uh, microsoft is not going to change normally they are not going to change because those labels are used in multiple places so a uh, sys label can be used uh, which which normally are sometime uh, same label is available in multiple sys codes so always remember that please use a very previous or old uh, sys label because that is that is surely it is not going to be changed sometime they make it obsolete also but if the label is very old and it is being referred to multiple places then microsoft is very difficult that it, they will uh, make it obsolete or delete it first they mark it obsolete and then in later releases they normally delete it so i will uh, give a match uh, actually filter options are match text match word and match exactly i will choose the third option match exactly then it will exactly match the phrase which i am going to search and then it will show me the sys labels in the label file itself this is a label lookup form actually and here i can see multiple labels are available so i will choose the this one uh, 1286 inventory transaction and the label will be placed there and then it will automatically translate uh, the compiler and then after uh, creating the main table then i need to also of course create the fields 
so what what fields we will require when we want to show the inventory transaction normally it will be item id item name and uh, you know the attributes of uh, item and then can be a quantity uh, how much is it being issued or received and uh, multiple actually i will be fetching the data from inventory trans table uh, normally and uh, then you know around it there are uh, multiple tables like invent table or uh, invent table module uh, which is uh, keeping the unit units uh, for example the purchase unit sales unit or in inventory unit or uh, bom unit are available in invent uh, table module table so i will uh, uh, create all the fields which will be required and this temporary table is basically a container a temporary container for holding the records uh, and and holding the record and the business logic basically or uh, the calculation uh, or the fetching of the record will uh, actually take place in dp class itself which will be shown in a moment uh, actually this video will be a longer video because this is a uh, dp based ssrs which is a little bit complex than uh, uh, query based query based is very straightforward so <clears throat> in order to write some business logic in the classes and you know multiple attributes and uh, uh, to create for example the contract class the parameters which we need and uh, in the dp class whatever the uh, the temporary table need to be referred and contract class need to be referred and then uh, i i would prefer here instead of uh, using loop we will be using set based operation which are uh, very efficient and uh, the round trips are uh, significantly reduced because it will go once and uh, it will perform its operation and come back so the only one uh, or two multiple uh, very uh, few round trips will be involved so of course it will increase the performance of, of report itself so item id item name and then uh, quantity invent dim id i am including here but in this video you will uh, see that uh, i will uh, instead replace it with the exact attributes like color size style and uh, configuration instead of putting invent dim id here because i want to display those at least four attributes on my report and this is just a demo report not an actual requirement but you can further enhance the report after you have completed this one so you you will find yourself having sufficient knowledge to even make it little bit advanced so the trans transaction instead of transaction date i will put a, a physical date which is actually physical movement date that is whenever a inventory has been physically moved out or moved in uh, so that a specific date need to be put here and normally the documents which involve uh, the physical issues or receives receipts are normally product received or packing slip on sales order product received on purchase order then there are uh, you know transfer orders can also be uh, for the issues or receives and then uh, you know that there are uh, movement journal or uh, inventory adjustment journal or uh, so sometimes you know the counting journal or uh, uh, there are multiple uh, journals available whenever the is issuance or receives can happen in the inventory and sometimes also the reversal reversal of product receives or packing slips can also you know the issue issues issue or uh, receive opposite uh, to the normal behavior so whenever you want to return some of the inventory to vendor because of some faults that can also happen so the physical date is actual the moment date of that inventory issuance or receives and uh, quantity is actually the quantity for example each or pieces of the inventory and the unit of measure will also be inventory uh, because an in invent trans normally it is the case so uh, creating the fields on uh, temporary table with a little bit take uh, time and whenever you create a field you need to make uh, inherit an edt extended data type 
which is uh, basically a uh, user defined data type uh, from the primitive data types for example primitive can be a real or integer or uh, can be a string and then um, user defined data types or already there are multiple plenty of uh, extended data types but all, always it is best practice to create your own um, edts or extended data types but in the, for the sake of this demo i am making this video short so that's why i am uh, using already existing data types it is not all always any it, it is it is not always like you create your own extended but if uh, there are you know the common uh, edts for example in this case color size style attributes you can use existing one so i will uh, create multiple folders in order to organize my objects in the project so it is always a good practice so i will put the table inside the table folder so this will be my container and a few of the fields i will again uh, manipulate uh, i mean the i i can remove or i can add multiple so uh, So I will now start with uh, uh, creating my classes. So starting with my contract class first, because that is the simplest one, and uh, I will I will create the contract class. And sequence wise also, it is good to start with the contract class, because then you can refer this contract class in your DP class or data provider class. So contract class I have already told that it is used for parameter passing. Whenever you execute the report or run the report, then uh, the a dialog box will appear, which will ask you a filtration criteria or parameters on the basis of what you want to uh, filter out your report. So in this case, inventory transaction, uh, I will uh, include only item ID as a parameter. So item ID will be the parameter in the contract class. So just I want to declare uh, this class as a you know the contract class attribute must be defined here so that uh, it will uh, recognize this class as a, a data contract class and uh, this is also useful I mean it is important that uh, access modifier can be uh, should be the public uh, for the class itself and uh, you need to explicitly declare it as a public uh, it is always a good practice, good uh, coding practice. Uh, don't uh, depend op upon the compiler that intri intrinsically it will uh, automatically take care of this. So always it is good practice to declare explicitly uh, the access modifier as a public. Then item ID uh, as a global variable it is declared in uh, the contract class at the beginning of declaration then uh, i will define my uh, you know the getter setter method or the param method and the purpose of param method is simple to set a value or a get a value of a specific variable in this case it will be the item id uh, item id variable uh, and uh, here uh, I need to define the parameter as optional when I don't give it and I want to retrieve so that uh, automatically uh, so when you assign a specific value to parameter uh, it will be declared as optional and always it is good practice for parameter to start with underscore this is a best practice from Microsoft so afterwards then i need to uh, simply if the value is passing on uh, from the underscore item id so it will be assigned to the global variable in this class and then uh, the value will be returned if it i am getting it from the parameter so it will be returned so that's it and then uh, i need to uh, define the attributes uh, for the param uh, method this need to be in uh, you know these um, uh, square brackets 
data member attribute uh, i need to give uh, the item id as uh, data member attribute here and uh, in the in case of sys operation label attribute i need to put a sys label here normally or you can also put a label uh, by string itself so whatever i mean the best practice is always to give a sys label here I will place item ID here as a label and uh, there is no label uh, search available here but it is available in uh, menu itself so I will go to extension and then find labels and in the label uh, search uh, uh, window i can uh, put item id and match exactly in order to get the sys label against item id there are multiple uh, sys labels available instead of item id uh, item will be appropriate label here so it's better to search by item and then uh, i will pick up a label here and uh, place the label sys label uh, over here for my param method to give it a appropriate label it will be item uh, for item id and the visibility uh, of the attribute in case of sys operation uh, i will uh, mark it as uh, false because whenever you as a batch or sys operation uh, framework you don't want to interact with your uh, objects so uh, i will mark the visibility as false here and i think that's it that's it for my contract class that's only one parameter and for that i have given the appropriate attributes and uh, then i will uh, also create uh, you know the new I rather I will just create a folder to place my classes in that folder so that is is again organize I will create another class now this this time time it is going to be data provider class and for that i will again prefix my class pkr underscore and then invent trans dp dp stands for data provider basically this is the main class where you need to uh, calculate your uh, calculate or perform your business logic inside your code and again the access modifier i need to make it a public and then uh, also the ssrs report uh, parameter attribute uh, need to be i need to define here uh, whatever my contract class is that need to be linked to this dp class here so i will just put it here so sequence wise always is better to create your contract class first and then while creating dp class you need, need to uh, uh, connect that contract uh, through this ssrs report parameter attribute and i also need to extend my dp class to srs srs report 
data provider. So data provider base. Once I have uh, created the definition here, uh, then I need to also uh, declare uh, my temporary table, which I have already created uh, as a, you know the container of my data, whatever the data I will be selecting, uh, selecting or calculating in my uh, DP class. So I need to uh, declare the temporary table and give it a logical name, which is inventory stamp here, and then. Uh, I need to uh, declare one, uh, I need to define a method which will be uh, selecting the data inside the temporary table and then returning that uh, data in the temporary table. So there can be a, you know, the getter uh, table, uh, getter method uh, where I need to first declare uh, the SS SSRS report data attribute as a temporary table. And then I need to define that method uh, as a return type. The temporary table will be returned, and this method need to be public. And then the definition uh, or the naming of the method can be get, and then the uh, temporary table name and uh, brackets, and then uh, select means all the data will be selected from the temp table, and it will be returned. It will be returned. Uh, So that's it for this temporary temporary table uh, get getter method. So this is only for you know it is serving as a getter and whenever you uh, drag and drop this DP as a data set to a report or uh, you just create a data set and choose a, uh, this DP class automatically this temporary table fields will be uh, created in data set itself. So now I need to also create a main table process report, which is the main table, a uh, main method. Uh, but I can also make use of this insert override method add-on. Uh, so instead of manually de defining it, I need to you make use of insert override method, and then uh, whatever the methods exist in the parent class, uh, those will be available to override and. Uh, I need to also define the documentation of this method. Uh, so this method basically processes the report data. <coughs> so that's it. it uh, the return type is void. Of course, there is no uh, value which will we will be returning. Rather, this uh, method will be processing the data uh, inside the temporary table. So I will remove the super uh, and then I will uh, write my logic here and. Uh, <coughs> Now, as I was telling you before, that uh, looping is not a good practice whenever you want to uh, create a DP uh, based report because normally uh, it is not any hundreds or thousand, it can also increase more than 10,000 or even, uh, even greater than uh, that number, the uh, number of rows phased or number of records phased. So, always it is good practice when you reduce the round trip. So previously, all the reports were involving the looping or while loop or some kind of looping. That is all, um, always performance hit on SSRS. So please do, do not use, uh, try to avoid the looping in, in your reports because now end user will be frustrated when you create a very useful report. But the performance wise, 
uh, this report is taking too much time and uh, in terms of minutes some time 15 and even more minutes it will get bore and uh, sometimes the data uh, is required immediately for example when the when the audit is going on or something is going on at that time the data is very important to be very quick if data fetch is very slow then it's no more useful uh, for the end user or the any of the department for example accounts or finance department so while uh, overriding the method uh, that is the process report i need to declare my contract class and then uh, i need to initialize the uh, contract class and uh, uh, cast it as invent trans contract uh, after it's being casted then i need to also fetch uh, the parameter which was set to the uh, item id for example item id the was the only parameter so after the object is ob contract object is initialized i need to assign uh, the param method that is getter getter uh, or param method of my data contract class the item id itself so the param item id the return will uh, return type will be assigned to item id uh, variable here on the basis of this item id i can make a use of this value if the value is empty or value uh, is there in the item id variable that can be used so I, I i won't use this if logic instead i will use set based operation and uh, instead of if i can make use of item id itself inside the where condition of the set based operation when i will uh, check my item id whether it is uh, empty or it contains a value so I will uh, make use of uh, or uh, logical uh, uh, operator. So insert record set in uh, in the temporary table which I already declared. So I need to also uh, give the fields name where I will be placing my values. Uh, so it is just like a SQL statement. Uh, instead, we are making use of X plus plus sign text here. But when it goes to SQL, so uh, it will translate in, into the uh, select statement or insert statement. Insert uh, SQL statement and as select from another table so it is almost similar so it will uh, uh, reduce the round trips when you make use make use of looping then for each of iteration it will make a single round trip uh, till the database from um, you know the browser then aos and AOS, yani iis and then it will go to the db so the whole round trip uh, will repeat for each of the iteration of looping but here it will not be the case here it will go a single time and whatever the select statement will uh, select the values or records from other tables it will be inserted directly there and it will come back with the results uh, the result will be the temporary table will be filled up so here item id item name i invent dim id quantity physical date water physical are selected and then <coughs> Then I will uh, need to select the mm, data as well. The sequence need to be the same. So I will definitely need invent trans table. Uh, basically, this is the table where all the inventory transaction, whether it is issuance or uh, receipts, are all always recorded. So invent trans is the basic table, and uh, so making it simple, I will not. Uh, want to make it com more complex or uh, for example uh, all the reversals or other things i will not uh, be care taking care of here so for the uh, sake of only to give you an idea how a dp based ssrs reports report can be created and later on you can make it in uh, advanced cases as well uh, based upon your own requirement 
so i am only making use of contract and dp in this case so i will try now to fetch the uh, required uh, you know the field values so uh, normally the item id field is available in invent trans invent dim id will be available because for each of itemized item transactions uh, the record must contain also invent dim id invent dim id is basically id uh, or the id uh, or the primary key value you can uh, say uh, of the invent dim table invent dim table is inventory dimension basically an inventory dimension can have uh, you know the product dimension and then uh, storage dimension like uh, warehouse uh, warehouse or site uh, and or or location or um, also it can also have the tra tra transaction uh, tracking dimension that is the batch id or serial id uh, you know the tracking dimension uh, which are normally used for example uh, perishable items uh perishable items for example medicines uh, those need to be tracked uh, through serial or batch numbers so uh, these three categories that is product uh, storage and tracking dimension are uh, collectively called inventory dimension and uh, the inventory dimension combinations exist in a certain table which is called invent dim table and inside the invent dim table all the combination exist and against each of the combination there is a unique invent dim id so that invent dim id uh, is being uh, inserted here <coughs> actually this will, i will later on uh, i will replace it with the actual invent color id invent uh, size id configuration and uh, style uh, normally these four attributes are used but if necessary you can also make use of other uh, dimension for the simplicity i am not uh, uh, making all the dimensions here so that uh, it is easy for you to understand uh, understand from this example so the quantity uh, and then uh, physical date you can see uh, on the left hand side application explorer you can uh, expand invent trans table itself and you can see actual what what whatever the physical names of the fields are and then, then you can place it here so that the compiler is not giving you any um, errors the sequence must be same and sometimes it happens that you need to join other tables but in that case also whatever the sequence of the table uh, sequence of the fields are in the select statement the same sequence need to be followed in insert record set the first statement here so it is very important the sequence is very important and the number of fields should be also matching if uh, for example here there are five fields so the same five fields can be in the select statement otherwise it will give you error for example uh, at the top it is five fields but at the bottom you are giving six or four fields or fewer or more fields then it will give you always an error because it should be the number of uh, uh, selected fields should be the same and then uh, the uh, sequence of fields also should be the same so it is very important uh, uh, record set is very efficient code and uh, nowadays all the reports have almost replaced with this uh, set based operation you can make use of uh, you know update record set as well and uh, normally uh, you can also multiple time uh, you can use it inside a method for example uh, sometime uh, uh, outer join is not uh, taken care in insert record set then through update record set you can join uh, through already existing records in a temporary table with the external regular tables and make an outer join in inside the update record set so here i am trying to in the where condition i am trying to accommodate whenever the item id is blank or item id contains some value 
but here it is little bit i mean uh, with the error because i i missed here item id should be also uh, compared with a blank value that i, I will uh, just in in a moment i will uh, change this code so uh, the or uh, the or get or gate or or operator here is being used for both of the condition when it is uh, item id is blank or item id contains some value so uh, no need of you know if condition and create two inside record set uh, uh, instead of that approach you can uh, use this approach as well and this will create uh, this will go as a single round trip so that uh, if condition will create a redundant code in my uh, in my thinking uh, when you can accommodate in this way uh, this is this way even here it is not accurate i will just in a moment i will uh, rephrase my code in the where because in this item id is uh, left uh, alone uh, actually it should also be compared with an empty value then it will be the correct syntax so all uh, all your logic goes here in insert record set in insert record set you can uh, make group by uh, group by or having uh, operators as well you can make use of that one aggregate uh, aggregate functions for example average sum uh, these functions can be used here but it cannot be used in uh, you know update record set uh, it can all, always be used in insert record set so once you have inserted you know the field value sometime uh, because of the complexity of joins or the relations uh, it is uh, it can be a practice that afterwards you can introduce another update record set and uh, populate a specific uh, or multiple field values which uh, which are difficult to uh, accommodate in insert record set but always try to reduce your code uh, and try to accommodate everything in one uh, round trip that is insert record set but sometime it has happened uh, uh, that uh, due to the complexity of uh, relations or joins, uh, sometimes we also make use an, of another round trip through update record set, and it will also not uh, uh, means uh, decrease the performance because again, again you are making use of set based operation. So after uh, you know. Uh, uh, I still need to adjust the code, but uh, DP class uh, is you can say uh, it is there now, and uh, you can create a report uh, report definition. So just create a report and give it a name, a similar way inventory transaction, tkr underscore invent uh, trans. Sometimes abbreviation, for example, which are very obvious, which are used in AOT, can be used. But you you just keep uh, uh, you know, for example, a popular abbreviation can be used. But whatever I mean, whatever you are thinking that it can be reduced further, it will not be good. So always make use if some abbreviation are uh, popularly used in AOT. Then make use of it. Otherwise, give it a logical name uh, for the sake of best best practices. So I will uh, definitely need a menu item uh, of kind of output whenever I am uh, targeting an object of type report. So output menu item is the most appropriate. I have uh, previously told you that display is for forms and uh, action menu items are for classes, actionable classes. So here, this is our report, and the, the this is there is no data sets. I will just uh, drag and drop my DP class into the data set, and you will see a magic that uh, the temporary table fields will automatically uh, it will create a data set of DP class, and actually it will be temporary table itself. So whatever the fields of temporary table will be shown uh, in the DP, you can see here. So just drag and drop. It's so much easy. The parameter, the only parameter item ID is already that is already created here. 
once you drag and drop so uh, the data source type is also report data provider it is already picked automatically and now the design i need to create so i will just drag and drop because i am very lazy lazy guy <laughs> uh i need to be a uh, smart uh, you know i want you to be a smart developer so always uh, take shortcuts because it will uh, save your uh, precious uh, precious time whenever you want to uh, create i mean spend time more on layout or something you just need to make a layout template which is report layout and then in the table itself you need to make a style template here which will be alternating rows here so that's it and then the fields are there i will need to group by uh, grouping i will need to create a grouping based upon item id For each of the item ID, I will uh, need to see the transaction for that item ID. So I will just drag and drop item ID on the grouping uh, node, and it will automatically create the item ID as a group. And then, then item name I will uh, place also on the same row, so the item name can also be shown and. Uh, I invent dim ID later on. I will change it to the exact attributes instead of invent dim ID because invent dim ID is meaningless for us. Uh, it, it will contain the ID values which is not useful for us. Physical date, of course, it is useful. Quantity is useful. Voucher is also useful. I will just save it. Sometimes uh, it happens then uh, that 100% uh, um, you are not going to complete all the report uh, at once. Uh, it means the complete report, 100% report at once. Rather, uh, first you go in, uh, you know, first iteration you will want to see a uh, few fewer fields, then you, you will also need to include or add more of the fields. So th that is also a good approach. So that at least your report and logic is good and then you will need to include more of the fields i will uh, just be creating an output menu item now iterative approach is always good because now you you will see your things are working then you can uh, further uh, fine tune your uh, requirements I will choose object type SSRS report and uh, I will uh, search my SSRS report which I already created now. So that is invent trans. I will need to also uh, give it a label. It is always good to put a sys label instead. I am just putting uh, a label, uh, you know, text value here. You can put your sys label. Instead, I will give a title uh, to my design. It will be displayed on uh, the design itself. So the placement will be the inventory module uh, of course and in inventory module uh, basically the best placement will be in inquiries and reports so i will uh, create an extension of the menu itself and uh, drag and drop to the uh, menus folder and then in the inquiries see here, here i am committing a mistake why because this transaction folder inside this menu is a russian based localization so uh, i am just just placing it here but later on i will uh, place it uh, at the parent level because now this russian based localization will be available only when your legal entity is in russia or you have enabled this localization the russian localization so right now this is a mistake uh, actually i have put it in a uh, wrong place 
um, apparently it looks good but since my legal entity uh, not necessary necessarily is in russia so the placement is not good so i am just keeping in this recording instead of deleting the or editing the video i want to show you whatever the mistakes you can commit and you can correct it so that will be also good so that's why i have not removed it just trying to build the project now you have seen there are two classes contract and dp class contract for parameters dp for data provider for business logic calculation for processing and then there is a report or and then uh, uh, menu item of type output and then there is a temporary table and menu is already existing and i will just place the menu i have already placed my menu item there now i need to just place the my menu item at appropriate place because that russian uh, folder was not visible now this one is appropriate because now this will be shown in any case so guys this video will be a longer video because uh, now uh, this is a dp uh, dp class based report so uh, data provider based ssrs report needs little bit more time than a query based because query based is very straight forward let me uh, check my report now go to the inventory management module and then in the transactions it is not still visible i will just need to reset ias and then uh, actually i have not built the project as well i need to build the project so sometimes some uh, when whenever you are changing a report and then you are building it sometimes some error can come up and that error does not necessarily means your code is having some errors but normally it also means that uh, some of the cache is being built or some of the parameters are being stored in your usage data so you need to also clear your cache or usage data to clear the cache uh, on the dev box it is always recommended to just uh, reset ias or just restart ssrs service it will uh, not uh, harm anyone because only you are working on a one box dev box so just reset ias or ssrs report need to be restarted uh, the service uh, and sometime usage data need to be cleared for the parameters which are being stored because now once you have changed the parameter of course the previous well one will uh, not uh, necessarily work so you need to clear that one so guys please subscribe to my channel and uh, i need more subscribers so please share the video and uh, to your colleagues or, or the new freshers uh, the people who have just uh, graduated in computer science and they want to uh, make their career in uh, you know the erp field and uh, this erp field is very rewarding field and you know uh, these uh, trainings are very necessary necessarily uh, ne necessary for you know training purposes and these are normally uh, might be other uh, people they are also recording the videos uh, but uh, i have done this because many of the people they were saying that they need certain training for example for their children or for their younger brothers or uh, for example uh, uh, to whoever they are assisting they wanted uh, training to be available in in terms of courses but these are usually not available and some of the best practices which i have learned during you know when i was working with microsoft for their outsource feature at that time i have learned these best practices from microsoft people uh, microsoft programmers senior programmers uh, their area 
they were area experts for example sir some people were area experts in SEM some were in finance so here inventory transaction our report is now visible the menu item is visible inventory transaction so just I have clicked it let's see so our uh, the single parameter item is being shown I have chosen the label only item not item ID so it is being shown here so I will uh, not choose any item I will just uh, click it so now there is a uh, you know there is one error a valid value for parameter item does not exist whenever a parameter is created whenever you drag and drop for example DP class to data set so you need to also make it an optional so there need to be two property values which you need to select it and then uh, make it optional null label yes and uh, empty yes I will just uh, put a value so that I can see my report at least it is working then I will make it optional so uh, I was just uh, telling you guys that uh, whoever after graduating computer science they want to make a career in ERP field so you know SAP S4 HANA Oracle and Microsoft Dynamics uh, 365 is very uh, you know popular ERP systems and uh, if you learn see here the this option is allow blank will be true and nullable will be true so it will make uh, the parameter optional if you want to give the parameter or not give it if you don't give it so all the transaction will be shown if you give an item ID so only that item ID uh, the transaction against that item ID will be shown so you can see here uh, 180 pages of uh, various items are shown when I have not chosen any item so all the item uh, transactions are being shown and it is grouped by through item number product name is not appearing and uh, that I have not selected yet although I have created in uh, temporary table the field itself but the value I have not fetched inside DP class also the dimension number uh, looks very unuseful or unfriendly because I, I would like to see my attribute uh, values for example configuration or color name or uh, size name or style name instead of only the code so I will just define my coding I will adjust my you know set based operation here so item ID will need to be checked against an empty value so if if a value is given so it will be compared with the item ID if it is not given I will just place this before so that sequence wise it will check if it is empty so no need to check the other uh, side of or operator that is when item ID is having some value so it will always check an empty if it is empty it will not bother on the right hand side of uh, or operator so now this one is correct sign text and guys you know the product name is very difficult when you make a joins you know ecores product uh, is linked with invent table invent table is linked with invent trans through item id and uh, then in, in inside the invent table there is a product field which is the rack id of ecores product table and then uh, then there is ecores product translation table where actually uh, for each of the languages uh, which uh, you can choose for a, example english us uh, you will find the translations of your product labels so that is very long way so there are normally views also available so the product name I will uh, fetch from uh, invent table expanded uh, view itself which is second tier of multiple uh, complex joins from uh, multiple tables uh, so this one invent table I will uh, declare as an invent table view and uh, previously I have tried to join uh, multiple tables but that is not working fine and it is also not feasible for you guys as well so make it uh, make the code simpler and uh, so I will just declare this view where the product name is there uh, 
you can see it here product name is available in this view i will just uh, join this uh, view and uh, also select the product name field from this view and uh, the join condition will be invent table view item id to the invent trans dot item id I will just build the project itself for the changes to reflect and uh, the product name will be displayed. We will see it a moment. Sometime when you <coughs> create uh, you know the new field uh, so the values are not displayed just need to re reset IAS uh, and uh, SSRS reports need to be restarted to for the cache to rebuild cache need to be refreshed or rebuild so that the values are shown correctly <coughs> i will just uh, Select one item which is 1000 here and then I will execute the report itself. So it should give me the product name now. Since I have selected the product name from the view itself by joining the table. So now it is shown. So 1000 item has Surface Pro 128 GB. The name is quite visible here. Let's see one more time. Yeah, uh, with without item ID, it is showing all the items. So that's it. The product name is working now, and uh, now let's make. Uh, uh, you know the invent dim id uh, instead of invent dim id i need to have uh, my attributes or uh, inventory uh, dimensions separately uh, specifically the product dimension i will not uh, use here any other dimension like storage or tracking <coughs> rather only product dimensions like configuration color size style just picking up the color uh, edt extended data type so it is equal as item color name in d3 is 5 they have changed little bit the extended data type previously it was like invent color id so now uh, the equal as item color name is there uh, i will uh, give appropriate name to uh, my the uh, to the fields in the temporary table so it is better to give it invent color id and then pick the appropriate edt so eco race uh, size name 
एक और एज आइटम साइज नेम You can search also here if it is not uh, available. Uh, you can uh, little bit type it and then it will be shown. I think it is equal as uh, item uh, size. Yeah, it is equal as item color name and similarly equal as item color uh, name. Yeah, this one is correct. Equal as item color name. No, it is incorrect again in the size. I should not be putting it. It it will be equal as item size name, and then uh, in the color, it is already there in the configuration. No, it is not uh, echo res item config name. It is not like this. Echo res. Uh, yeah, it is echo res configuration name actually. Invent uh, config ID. I will give this field name. And then uh, the remaining is style ID. Ecores style name. Ecores style name will be the extended data type for style ID. I will give it a name in my invent style ID. So now that's it. Uh, four of the product attributes have been defined instead of showing invent dim ID. So I just need to uh, give, uh, I mean, accommodate the business logic in my DP class as well, so that these field value uh, field should also contain the value, appropriate values, and that join I will uh, definitely be joining in my dim uh, table itself, which will contain the the values for these fields. So this is our DP class, our set based operation. Here, uh, in when dim uh, table, I need to declare uh, the buffer for the table, and then I need to join this in when dim table. And the condition definitely in when dim ID is coming from in when trans, so that need to be joined with this one. So the placement can be after the product name join. So the sequence I will put in in my insert statement in the same sequence. The last uh, four uh, fields, four additional fields. So invent config ID, invent color ID, invent size ID, and invent style ID from invent dim. And in the where I need to join, I mean, I need to join uh, this one uh, invent dim ID to the invent dim ID field in invent trust. That's it. Now it is joined, and then I need to place the new field which I have now selected in the insert uh, statement. The sequence will be after you know item name. I need to put it. Item name is already in the join condition, so I will uh, go to the second line in order to make your code visible and very clean. The indentation of your code is very important. I mean, the select and join should be in line, and then uh, we are invent color, size, style. All the sequence you can see is the same as below. So it is showing me that invent config ID is not a field there. So actually, it is, I think, config ID. So instead of invent config ID, it can be config ID. 
in the invent dim uh, table so i can see in my application explorer uh, while expanding the invent dim uh, table itself the physical name uh, physical or technical name of the fields so it is config id and uh, i think the remaining one are correct so once i save it so the error has gone gone away it is validated after the temporary table through dp class is uh, uh, populated i mean the values of these uh, product attributes are populated uh, then here you can see in the invent on hand copy that uh, also parameter to make it visible or unvis uh, invisible are also being used so you can also make use in advanced form of this report uh, so that if a specific attributes you don't want uh, or you you are not interested to show for example configuration uh, attribute or certain attribute then you can make use of parameter for visibility of the fields sometime also you need to make it aggregate or summarize so you need to have the overall quantity or sum of the quantity of a specific item instead of the variants of that item uh, or predefined variants so in that case also you need to make a certain uh, you know uh, summary uh, logic inside your classes that is more advanced or complex forms you can uh, have a look at existing uh, logic or existing classes or the reports behind which there are certain classes and how they are working like for example invent on hand uh, classes are there or in other inventory reports are there which you can uh, uh, see for example uh, for the sake of an idea how you will be creating your own report it is always a good practice to see the existing code and you create your code as per uh, uh, existing ones but always keep in mind that sometime the best practices can also be skipped in existing so always try to uh, any for naming conventions and documentation purposes and for your code efficiency always keep in mind that always good practice uh, to follow the best practices to uh, restore my data set so that all the temporary table fields which i have added are also shown here so it is all the product attributes are shown here so i will uh, also need to uh, include these uh, uh, attribute into my design as well so the best place will be i think uh, it will be on the group level so need to remove invent dim id it is not necessary and i will put the other uh, product attributes into the row of the grouping itself so that item id name and uh, all attributes should be at the same level and then voucher uh, physical date and quantity will be on the uh, detail level so one item and its uh, item and uh, i mean the variant will uh, show all the transaction related with this this one uh, so invent dim id is also included in item uh, id grouping So the product attributes now are included and uh, you know you need to also check whether it is shown or not shown on the report display itself and uh, so here the values are shown uh, the configuration size and color in the style and whenever uh, value is there it is being shown in the report so it means our report is now working and uh, 
after this uh, i can see here that uh, for example the quantity uh, should also show the unit of measure uh, because whatever the unit of measure in this case because the transactions are fetched from invent trans so basically it belong to inventory module so the inventory unit should also be shown here so whether it is uh, whatever it is uh, and for that we need to also uh, add another field of unit of measure and then also populate that field so that will be very logical whenever you are showing some figures or numbers so it is important that uh, you you must also include all the relevant information that is unit of measure in this case now accommodate the unit of measure uh, so first we need to create a field uh, of type string of course in a temporary table and then we need to accommodate in a dp class whatever the logic for uh, uh, bringing the unit of measure which we'll see in a moment uh, just to choose an extended data type of a unit of measure let me yeah, invent unit id will be the best edt extended data type and i will uh, give it a name unit of measure so once the field is created then i need to also uh, make uh, adjust my code in dp class which is set based operation to make a specific join to get my unit of measure in our case here uh, you know invent table module is the table where you can get your purchase sales invent or bomb units uh, normally there are uh, multiple records available and then uh, So I will be fetching my unit ID from uh, invent table module uh, table and in the join condition uh, in the where I will make use of item ID uh, field on, in the invent table module and uh, invent trans table and then I will need to pick the inventory unit which I am interested here. Uh, since it is invent trans table from where I am fetching the transactions, so invent table module uh, module type need to be also invent module uh, actually it will not be invent the module type. I need to check the enum of uh, uh, the field field which is called module type no it is not this one also it is not this enum i need to check in the table itself so for example invent table module it is very important the edt should be the same or enum value should be the same which is being used in the field to in order to restrict it or compare uh, filter it in your uh, select statement so here the unit module type is here and i need to check the properties which is module invent parts sales enum type i will choose that enum value module invent parts sales and invent is the specific one which I need here so here is our criteria which is now complete I just need to adjust my indentation here so now I think the unit ID is also in sequence I need to just place my unit here so I just need to restore uh, my data set so the new field added is also visible I will just drag and drop my unit of measure field into the row which is which will be shown 
not in in the row but actually in the detail level where beside the quantity uh, the unit must be shown so that's it now i need to deploy the report and uh, while deploying it will automatically build as well and uh, if necessary we need to reset the ias as well it will take a while to uh, build and uh, deploy the report and all the all its objects like classes and various uh, objects guys i think you you are enjoying uh, the video actually this one was a uh, little bit complex and uh, of course uh, whenever you uh, for you work for a real requirement then definitely the perfection level is higher than only this training session this is just for demo demonstration purpose and uh, whatever is required to build uh, you know the, the dp uh, dp ssrs report and it will give you ex uh, specific training to start at least uh, to start with uh, developing uh, at a uh, at a certain confidence level you will get confidence level once uh, if you see this uh, video multiple times then your concepts definitely if you are a beginner it will be clear if you are uh, you know intermediate developer or uh, advanced developer you must already be knowing most of the things uh, so it will uh, uh, little bit increase your knowledge but of course for the beginner it is uh, very much you know blessings Uh, to know the concepts and to start with at least to whatever the requirements you get in your career uh, so just dialog bo box is shown i have restarted ssrs service and ias uh, uh, i have already uh, reset ias and uh, so here is our display and you can see inventory unit is being shown as each and uh, minus quantities are definitely whatever the quantities have been issued and uh, the positive values are which are received and of course i have not taken care here all the reversals and other uh, negative criteria i have taken it as in a uh, simple case and uh, positive way whatever the inventory transaction we can uh, display but of course uh, based upon your requirement you can a uh, little bit uh, uh yani ch change your uh, you know or fine tune the report or uh, or uh, or another type of report which you need and you can also convert this auto design into precision design and then adjust the layout as per your requirement certain layouts you know as i have told you precision design is very precise and you when you need uh, more control on your you know field placements and uh, uh, the width width of fields and uh, uh you know control over the design then it is always recommended to go for precision design so uh, that's it guys and uh, in order to make sure that uh, the voucher shown are correct i will uh, just make a sql query and uh, there i will uh, use the voucher value which i have copied from my report and uh, the technical name should be correct and i will be picking up the value from inventrace of course and uh, just let me execute it but it's showing error in uh, the field name actually it is i think voucher physical and yeah the values are being shown and uh, you can see uh, 472 rows are being shown uh, in the sql query so in this way uh, you can uh, verify and double check whatever the values are being shown in the report so that those are correct values and uh, also for date physical specific date uh, which is shown in you know in my report uh, the 
it is 15 11 2016 uh, so i need to also put this criteria so that uh, need to check a sample of data whether it is accurate it is always a good case when you develop a report uh, as a developer you should also check the accuracy of your report so yeah it is working fine almost uh, 94 rows are returned so that's it guys if you have enjoyed uh, my video please subscribe to my channel and if you would like to have uh, more training on certain area just please let me know through your comments or feedback thank you thank you thank you guys